In this video, we'll explore the Granulator 3 Max for Live device and see how you can use it to create unique, texturally rich sounds. This video assumes at least a basic level of synthesis knowledge and an understanding of things like envelopes, LFOs, and filters, as covering these is beyond the scope of this video. Instead, we'll focus on the elements of Granulator that make it unique compared to other synths you might have worked with. Granulator 3 is available to users of Live Suite and must first be installed from the available pack section. Once installed, Granulator 3 will appear in the pack section at the top. Granulator comes with several presets for you to use. Listen to some of these to get an idea of the kinds of sounds possible with Granulator. For now, we'll load up a blank instance and build our own sound. Granulator is divided into three main sections. The main display at the top, the modulation display in the middle, and the parameter display at the bottom. Granulator uses samples as the sound source, so we first need to load a sample into the device. I'll grab one of the samples that's included with the pack and drag and drop it into the main display. Granulator's main display can either show the loaded sample or granulator's to envelopes, LFO, and filter section. It can also be set to automatic mode, showing the section of the main display relevant to whichever control we're currently focused on. We'll leave it in auto mode for now. The parameter display at the bottom of the device shows all the controls most important to shaping granulator's sound. We'll start with the controls on the left. Granulator is a granular synthesizer that works by playing back small chunks of the loaded sample, known as grains. These first five controls adjust how these grains are played back. The first control sets the playback mode. We'll leave this on classic for now and explore the other modes shortly. In classic mode, Granulator plays back two overlapping looping grains per stereo channel. Position sets where in the sample our grains are played from. You'll see and hear that as I adjust position, the part of the sample that is played back changes. You can also adjust position by clicking and dragging within the sample display. Grain size adjusts how much of the sample is played back with each grain. Note that similar to a conventional sampler, the note that I play affects the speed of the sample's playback, with lower notes playing slower and higher ones playing faster. So, grain size doesn't necessarily affect how long each grain's loop is, but rather how much of the loaded sample is played back. The scan control causes the playback position to advance within the sample as the note is held. At zero, the sample always plays back in the same position, but if I increase scan, the position advances through the sample as the note is held. In classic mode, the shape control sets the envelope of each grain. At 50, each grain fades in and out smoothly. At zero, the grains have a sharp attack and quick decay. At 100, the grains have a longer attack and an abrupt end. Granular synthesis starts to get interesting by adding variations to the playback of each grain. This is what the variation control is for. As I increase variation, you'll hear that each grain's playback begins to vary, creating an ever-changing sound. By default, variation affects the playback position of each grain, but it can also influence the grain's size and volume, which we can adjust using the modulation display in the center of the device.
Next along is the transpose control. It's essential to be aware that because we are using samples as the source of our sound, we might need to tune the overall output to map correctly to our keyboard. To demonstrate this, let's load a new sample. We can see from the sample's name that the root note of the sample is E. Granulator, like any sampler, assumes the note of whichever sample we load to be C. If I play the note of C on my keyboard, the sample plays back at its normal pitch, which in this case is an E. We can see this by loading Live's tuner after the granulator. Therefore, I need to adjust the tuning of granulator by minus four semitones so it plays in key with the rest of my sounds, including some fine tuning if needed. Moving along, the spread control offsets the pitch between the left and right channels, as well as adds subtle variations to other elements of the sound in each channel, enhancing the stereo image. Now that we know more about some of Granulator's controls, let's look at the other two modes. Loop works much like a regular sampler, looping the selected section of the loaded sample. In this mode, Shape controls the crossfade of the loop. When grain size is selected, there is also an additional reverse control that defines the chance a grain will be played in reverse. Cloud mode, up to 20 individual grains are layered to create rich textured sounds. Shape is unavailable in cloud mode, but an additional density control is available when grain size is selected, which sets the number of simultaneous grains. In addition to adding modulation with the variation control, the modulation display lets you add a variety of other modulations to Granulator's controls. The modulation display updates based on the currently selected control and shows available modulations for that control. For example, we could add random modulation to the position control so that each new note plays with a random position. Let's load a different sample to hear this in action. Granulator 3 also supports MPE, and many of its parameters can be modulated by MPE parameters like slide and pressure, in addition to the built-in envelopes and LFO. Granulator 3 also supports live input, allowing you to capture the output of another track or input and immediately use it as a source of granulation. To do this, click the I.O. button in the sample display, then choose a source input. This could be another track in live or an external input source like a microphone or hardware synth. 
Hitting the capture button will instantly grab a snapshot of sound from the input equal to the length of time defined by the length parameter. You can then immediately play back and manipulate the sound just like any other within the device. To keep the recorded sound and save it with your set, you will need to click the Save button and save the sample to a location on your hard drive. If you don't save the sample, it will not be remembered the next time you open your project. Now that we know how Granulator works, let's hear a few sound examples. One creative way to work with Granulator is to load an initial sample, set up some settings, and then swap out different samples to hear the results you can get. Remember that much of the sound will be determined by the sample you load, but experiment with Granulator's grain controls to stretch and smear samples into completely new pads, atmospheres, and textures. <laughs> 